All right, hey guys, Mitch here with the Audio Dabbler YouTube channel, and I just want to go over a few things inside of Beatmaker 3, the new update. So first off, if you're in a session and you want to save it, now there is a quick save option right here. You just click it and it will save, which is awesome. Next, um, they've updated the audio effects little area, and now you have a little audio effects, but they've added in MIDI effects. And so now all your Brambos apps are able, you're able to use your Brambos apps or any other AUV3 MIDI app that you have for each pad or the bank. And so that is uh, pretty cool. One caveat to that is I was unable to, when I tested it earlier, to get it to record the MIDI notes as you were playing them. So if you had a, if you had one like cells or particles that was kind of generative, it wouldn't actually generate the MIDI notes onto the onto a certain um, pad MIDI timeline. Maybe that's just not the way it's designed, but just note that that is the case, or at least when I tested it. But it's still loads and loads of fun to be able to add in those MIDI effects. Okay, so the coolest thing, and it, I feel like it rivals the Ableton Live's uh, simpler app as far as its beat detection system or transient detection system so I'm going to load up a let's see which one what is that one I don't know what that one is alright so let's just load this up oh that is the AIFF so that one's the one that's already sliced up let me try this one um, Okay, that's the wave. All right, so we have a wave file here. And what we can do now, if we wanted to chop this up, we've got a couple options. We can go here to slice mode. We can auto slice. We can split it into 16. And it kind of gets, because this is a loop, it kind of gets pretty well as far as um, where, it, where the chops are. You know, and I can further make this better if I control what the tempo is here so if I turn this to 115 you'll see that it moves the grid and now because this is a perfect loop I could do auto slice to the grid and chop it up every so often if I wanted to but what if I just wanted to do the transient detections like I, I wanted it to slice at every transient well I could hit detect now it will slice at every transient and I can adjust the resolution here I can go down to you know 0% and it'll get the most obvious transients and then as I up the resolution it's going to get pick up more and more transients now if you're not familiar with what a transient is a transient is basically if you have a level line and then anything that goes up above that line as far as volume or amplitude that's going to be labeled as a transient now <clears throat> what I'm going to because I'm not a programmer and I'm not exactly for sure how it works I'm assuming that as you go from zero to a hundred percent it lowers that threshold and picks up on more transients as opposed right here zero it has to be really really high to be detected but if we're up to a hundred then transients on a lot lower amplitude will be picked up so that's just um, really cool in itself and what you can do with this is I could save this with all the little transients detected I could save this as an Apple loop okay now I've already done this but what that allows you to do I've already went through the import process that way it'll make this video a little bit quicker but here's that drum beat or here's that bass line imported as an AIFF and you can see how it's speeding up but the it's speeding up the loop but it is not changing the um, pitch as opposed to that one's not either but regardless of the tempo it's just going to play 
This is before and this is after. And like in here, if I wanted to add in that loop banks, that's the AIFF. If I wanted to load in this one, I can slow it down by changing the pitch. So that's normally how thing a lot of apps will do it is if you slow the pitch down or pitch it down, it's going to slow the loop down. But the beauty of being able to export it, export a loop like this with the slices as an AIFF, it allows it to change the tempo without changing the pitch. Now you do get some, as you slow it down, you get some little, you can hear some little artifacts and stuff, but you know, that's, you know, to be expected, you know, and you can, you can play around and adjust more and more inside of this app, inside of Beatmaker 3 to get those, to get those, some of those slices exactly how you want them. But this right here really gives you a quick, a very, very, very quick start as to not having to go through and slice everything up. Um, so that is that option. <clears throat> so the next option would be the live stretch. And so let's bring up one more. Let's load up a sample. Let's load that one in. All right, so now we have this sample here. It's at 124 because I know that it's 124 because that's what the um, the file says. So let's change the BPM to 124, and that is for this particular sample that is selected. If it was a different sample, if I loaded in um, another sample here, and I added to a new layer. It's at 120. See, that's at 124. This is at 120. I can set this one to 128 if I wanted to. And so it's taken into account the the different um, transient, or it's taken into account this particular BPM. And where that's useful, if I go to Live Stretch and I click on High Performance, well, that sounds different than what it did before, didn't it? Sounds a little bit, a little bit quicker. So, cause it's pulling it based on the BPM of the project. So, if I change this BPM down to 90, 98, it sounds the same. But if I have the stretch on. Here it's slowing down. If I speed it up, and so it's going to go. Um, you know, this may not be you know exactly on the money as far, but it it pitches it up and down without. All right, changes the tempo without you know pitching things up and down and that is uh, really really cool really nice when you have you know uh, projects going on and you import drum beats that are not on the same tempo then as long as you know the tempo of that drum beat and you put it in then it works okay so one last test before I let you guys go here is I'm just going to record in some guitar and I'm just going to show you how cool the transient detection is. I'm just going to play a basic scale here. Oops. All right, I could have played that way better, but we go to edit, normalize. All 
All right, so now let's go to slice mode, auto slice. And because I didn't tempo or anything like that, then I can just detect and look at that. I don't have to go in there and slice all that up. I can just use that detection. And if I want to kind of cut some of those out at the last, I can. And then boom. Here, let's save that to single layer. And now we're on this one. Keys. So that's just, and how quickly, how quick was that? I just recorded in that and then now I can just have a little groove going on. I mean, while we're here, right, let's just, uh, let's just try this. Collider. Let's try Collider here. Play. Chromatic. Pitch. There we go. some more and so now I have it <clears throat> just to show you that it works I have it you know playing those playing those notes and that is pretty cool so if I wanted to go to MIDI effects So that's pretty pretty cool just in itself how quickly I got something going on what was that search oh banks there we go summer drums why not Just go in there, summer drums. What I just recorded. You know, if I wanted an audio track, where'd the audio track go? Right here. Record sample. Now I can do internal. I can do from that. I can stop. Turn the threshold down. And let's start. So this is definitely a way you can use the MIDI, even though it's not going to record the MIDI notes itself, you can definitely use those MIDI notes to drive something and then rip the audio down all in the same app, which is really, really cool. So let's stop that. Alright, so now we have this audio right here, so we go to the pattern. Go here and still trying to play. Let's mute. I have that one muted. So it's 
playing the notes from. So we go to the mixer. So that that's a really really cool and useful way of uh, using that. So hopefully this was helpful. I know it kind of you know jumped around a little bit, but I feel like I brought everything together in the end. You know, showing you how you could just take you know use these tools that it has now and um, just create you a little little something going on. I mean that was just um, my Sennheiser microphone with my guitar with some horrible playing and uh, just sliced it up. And then just put a little drum groove on it and then recorded the audio. And now I have this audio right here. And I can go in because this audio now is saved probably under the sessions. This was called YouTube Vid Recordings. I am. So. You know, now I could go and I could export that, rename it, do whatever I want to, you know, just start building up other things. So uh, hopefully this was helpful. All the other, all the links, applicable links, Patreon and PayPal and all that good stuff are in the description. And um, hopefully this helps. And I will talk to you guys later.